in the direct aftermath of the 9-11 attacks, I imagine Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda in general had complicated feelings. On one hand, this was a period for them to celebrate, the most significant attack in their history, a stab directly into symbols of American financial and military power, was a huge success. However, they knew the US would not just take an attack lying down. Within a week, the US announced the global war on terror, in which they would use any dollar they had and spill the blood of thousands of their young people in order to get their revenge. What was next for both America and Al Qaeda? How did we get to the murky situation that we have today? Let's take a look. Within hours of the 9-11 attacks, Bush administration officials like Donald Rumsfeld told their underlings they needed to find a way to link this attack by Al Qaeda, a jihadist Salafi group, and Saddam Hussein, the secular Arab nationalist leader of Iraq. NATO argued the 9-11 attacks satisfied something in their alliance called Article 5, which meant member countries were required to aid in military retaliation. After the announcement of the War on Terror, the goal to get Al-Qaeda and bin Laden quickly turned into a global project. On October 7th, the US and British militaries began a bombing campaign of Afghanistan to disable the infrastructure of Al-Qaeda and their Taliban allies. The invasion itself was pretty short. The Taliban's hold on Afghanistan ended two months after the bombing began and started what would become an endless campaign of occupation and insurgency. Those plans to invade the utterly unrelated country of Iraq came soon after. In early 2003, the United States was laying destruction upon Iraq after telling the world they were working with Al-Qaeda. Then when that turned out to not be true, the news story was that Iraq was trying to get the means to make a nuclear bomb. I guess with George Bush, nuclear bomb. And when that turned out to be false, well, the US had already destroyed the country and there wasn't much to do at that point. I mean, that's technically a war crime and all, but when has America ever felt the need to follow international law? Anyway, this is a video about Al Qaeda, not why George Bush is a war criminal. Though, that's a video I really want to make. Al Qaeda wasn't doing much in Iraq until after the US invasion. The Iraqi government there suppressed that kind of stuff. The first bombing by Al Qaeda in Iraq was in August of 2003, and their campaign was focused on trying to attack the Shia majority in the country and incite a civil war on Shia Sunni lines. Probably another video idea, Shia and Sunni split. These attacks involved kidnappings, attacking voters, and sites where the US was torturing prisoners, good job on that one America, and general bombings to try and incite violence between the Sunnis and the Shias. By 2006, Al Qaeda in Iraq was working closely with other Sunni militants in the country and decided to break off from Al Qaeda to make the Islamic State of Iraq, or ISI. Eventually, this spilled over into the Syrian civil war when it broke out and expanded into the Islamic State of Iraq and Syria, or ISIS. And there goes my monetization. Outside of Iraq, the war on terror put Al Qaeda in the center of this movement of Sunni extremist militants. Groups in the same world began to pledge their loyalty to Al Qaeda and build more of a network. For example, Al Qaeda began to focus on countries like Yemen and Somalia once the US got overinvested in the borderlands between Afghanistan and Pakistan, where Al Qaeda was running their insurgency campaign after the US invasion. They built relationships with groups like Al-Shabaab in Sudan, who eventually pledged allegiance to Al-Qaeda in 2012. Their work in Yemen gave Saudi Arabia carte blanche for its genocidal war in Yemen they began in 2015 and continue to this day with almost no one talking about it. They even claim to have made a network in India with an intention to use India as a staging ground to make further attacks in places like Myanmar and Bangladesh. This was very recent and oddly enough suspected to be a PR stunt without a ton of weight. Once the young ISIS came onto the scene with their deep fried memes and social media prowess, Al Qaeda might be trying such publicity stunts just to stay relevant. Patreon.com slash Step Back History. Hey folks, as you can probably imagine, this video was so demonetized it hurt. If you want to help make these difficult but important videos, please go to Patreon and pledge as little as a dollar a month. It really helps. Remember when I said this? Terrorism is one part violence, two parts PR. Well, 
Al Qaeda relied on that to build this narrative that they would be the organization which Sunni terrorists would rally behind. Osama bin Laden's connections, resources, and leadership skills were a vital part of that. In 2011, a small team of Navy SEALs underwent a covert operation in Pakistan. The Americans found where bin Laden had been hiding and broke in. On the 1st of May in 2011, President Barack Obama announced the Americans had killed bin Laden in a firefight that broke out when they executed this operation. By then, almost a decade had passed since 9-11, and the victory was full of controversies. Pakistan was more than a little miffed. The US had blatantly violated their territory with a military invasion. Also, I might be alone here, but the celebration which followed the announcement of his death was ghoulish. I don't know about you guys, but I think the justice for all those who died that day was gone when bin Laden was killed without a trial. We don't know the details of what happened, and probably won't for some time, but justice didn't really get served. Today, Al-Qaeda struggles to stay relevant. With ISIS taking up much of the energy of the world's attention since 2014, as well as other groups like Boko Haram, it's a bit hard now to establish themselves as the de facto core of this movement. Without bin Laden, they're resources, connections, and leadership are at risk. Who really knows what's next for them, if anything? However, I wonder if that means Al-Qaeda really lost. 9-11 changed America in ways I think Bin Laden anticipated. He showed that the commitment to freedom that America had was really only skin deep, and that they were willing to throw it away to defeat an enemy that they outnumbered and had way more resources then. It dragged America into two massive wars that spent tons of their money and crap to the US economy. Not to mention the thousands of American soldiers who have died in the Middle East and in Afghanistan in the name of defeating terrorism? Lastly, bin Laden thought that the West was the enemy of Islam, and the way the West has been acting since 9-11... I think Islam hates us. Are we really proving him wrong? Thank you, 12 Tone, for the theme song for Step Back, as well as patrons Don and Carrie Johnson, Michael Kirshner, Scott Smith, Martin King, Luis Ineas Guarita, Mary Dinofio, James McNeese, and Garrett Kwan. Like, share, subscribe, and come back next time for more Step Back.